Hey yo, I am Ryan Peverly, host of this here O'Culture podcast, and I've got a little bonus audio here from my recent conversation with UFO author and researcher Ryan Sprague, where we discussed his book, Somewhere in the Skies, A Human Approach to an Alien Phenomenon. If you haven't yet heard our conversation, I'd suggest you go listen to that first. It's episode 8 called Somewhere in the Skies. At the least, it'll provide some context to what you're about to hear, but it might not be necessary. Now, if you've heard the entirety of the last couple episodes, you've heard me mention I'm working on a new feature for this show for subscribers. This is not that feature. That new feature has been a bitch to put together, to be honest, but it's coming along nicely, and it'll be ready soon. What this is, really, is something I stumbled upon while talking to people for this show. I found that there's some really interesting conversation that happens before the microphone is turned on and after it's turned off, so I started actually recording the conversations as soon as I connect on a call with the guest, and I don't stop recording until we hang up. So what you're about to hear is more conversation between Ryan and myself that took place immediately after the interview. Enjoy! Hey, that was a really cool conversation. I didn't mean to push back as much as I maybe did with the consciousness stuff, but... No, I love it, man. Like, that's what I like about it. Like, there has to be discourse. If I'm just here preaching to your audience, what the hell's the point, you know? And I respect that you have different outlooks on it, too. Absolutely. And like I said, who the hell am I to tell people what to think? I'm... This is what I took from the people in the book. This is kind of like what I'm looking at in my research. And uh, it's kind of why I wrote the book. I'm sure I'm going to get some some hate on it for sure. But uh, in the meantime, dude, like the fact that you're willing to have me on and tell my side of it, that's all I could ask for. And that's that's what it's got to be about for sure. Absolutely, man. Well, again, I really do appreciate your time. I I know you've been making the rounds here in the podcast world. I actually have. I downloaded about, I think, two or three other ones that I didn't even get to listen to yet. Um, so, <laughs> well, I hope I didn't repeat myself too much. I don't want to come off as that guy either. <laughs> well, yeah, you know, and I, like I said, I listened to the one with Jim, and I was just trying to make sure, you know, Jim's got a huge audience, obviously, and I just wanted to make sure that I didn't ask some of the same questions. I wanted to talk maybe a little bit more in depth about it and the theories and whatnot. And there were a couple anecdotes nope. from the book that I didn't really get to. Like, I really like that one. I don't know how you would say it, like UFO TOG, that UFO TOG yeah, technology, yeah, man. Yeah, that's a like, really cool one. Yeah, I would have loved to talk about that for a minute, but obviously we're short on time here, so. Oh, no worries, man. Yeah, that's a really fascinating chapter, and one I struggled with for a while, like if I should include it or not, with all the scientists and everything. Um, But I think it was essential. Like, that's what's going to get the skeptics to be like, oh, you know, like, OK, you know, true scientists are looking at this. So that's I'm so excited that you you actually like appreciated that chapter. No one's asked me about it yet. Oh, so. damn it. Can we talk about it? Do you have time? Uh, Yeah, sure. Well, yeah, yeah let's, let's just do like a few more minutes here. And I really just want to talk about the story. OK, so it's these two guys and I actually wrote their names down. Mark D'Antonio, who yep. is the chief photo and video analyst for MUFON. Mm-hmm. And Douglas Trumbull, a guy who worked on special effects for some really awesome films, 2001 A Space Odyssey, Close Encounters, Star Trek the Movie, Blade Runner. This is like, that's like three of my favorite films right there. <laughs> yeah, me too. Or four, I guess, four. And this story is about them collaborating on this thing called UFO TOG. I said UFO TOG in my head when I was reading it. But then, like, so Trumbull, the special effects guy, comes up with this piece of technology, which is actually like a vehicle, right? Yes. And then, yeah. and then he starts working with D'Antonio, who suggests some modifications to it. So they come up with UFO TOG two. Mm-hmm. Would you mind telling people about that? Yeah. So as far as I know, um, the the second version of this is um is in the works right now. I know they're um they're looking for some extra funding. What this basically is, man, is we're looking at, like, a Humvee on the ground and remote-controlled. So, like, you don't even need a human in control of this thing. And what they're doing is they're trying to triangulate a UFO event happening, you know, what it is, um, triangulate on that, and be able to get this vehicle in the vicinity while it's in real time happening and just 
photograph and video the hell out of this thing from resolutions we can only dream of. I mean, D'Antonio has worked on some of the most high-end photographic analysis we can think of, you know, with MUFON and outside of MUFON. And with Trumbull's help and his pull in, like, the world of Hollywood and beyond, I can't even imagine, like, the funding they could get for a project like this. And what's more, like, intrepid than, like, sending out a remote-controlled Humvee with these huge telescopic uh, cameras to record the event as it's happening? It's just, it's incredible to me that this is the technology that's out there and that it's not being used to try to monitor UFOs. But these guys are doing it, man. And that's so cool. And there's so many other younger scientists out there and entrepreneurs looking at other things similar to UFO talk. And um, I wanted to really bring that forward in the book and show that this this quote-unquote line between science and UFOs, it's not as distinct as we think. And it's the line is getting uh, – it's getting more hazy as the days goes on, and I think that's really cool. Absolutely, dude. Thanks for talking about that for a minute. And I tell people my personal life all the time. I mentioned it on the podcast a couple of times. I'm not a huge fan of technology. I'm not a huge fan of how mainstream science goes about their business. But when we start to use what we have available to us to improve things like quality of life and then to study – this these weird paranormal phenomena you know like i mentioned a news story a few weeks ago about some scientists who may have solved the bermuda triangle mystery just from using yeah scientific approach that we've had for decades and it's just like we don't put our the resources we have into studying these things that are so weird and so apparently otherworldly that if we did that Maybe we would find out that it's not as weird as we think it is. That is such a good point, man. And, you know, when I came across that Bermuda Triangle article and I told people, they're like, oh, that's not that exciting. Like, oh, it's not like. (laughs) It's not. It's not as exciting, but it makes sense. You know what I mean? Yeah. But we have an answer. And that's what we're trying to do with UFOs. And I say, even in the introduction, like, we're going to search for answers. And even if we get them, we may not like those answers. But that's what science does. And we have to respect that and appreciate it. UFOs may not be aliens. They might. But until we get to that point, um, I'm going to keep taking that journey, man, with the scientists and without. Hey, one one last quick question. Would you be disappointed if we ever found out that that for sure they were not, you know, creatures from outer space, I guess? That's a good question. Uh that, that I I struggle with that constantly. Um do I want to believe that there are aliens out there? Absolutely. Um do I want to believe they've been visiting us, you know, for decades and decades? Uh the research has led me that way. Um but Maybe not. So while I might be a little disappointed if that's not the case, there's so much more in life. You know, UFOs aren't my entire life, Ryan. I don't know about you with the paranormal and the occult, but um, there are other things in this life worth doing in the limited time we have. Um, This is just one huge profound question that I want to continue researching and looking at. But, you know, when it comes down to it, man, there's so much in this world to experience. Uh, so if there aren't any little green men, oh, well, I'll find something else to look at. <laughs> Absolutely, man. Hey, I appreciate you hanging out for a few extra minutes here. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate your time as well. All right. I hope you enjoyed that. Just a reminder that Somewhere in the Skies is available on Amazon. There's a link in the show notes if you're interested in buying it. Either way, thank you for spending a few extra minutes here with us. That's it for now. We'll see you soon. Oh, love yourself. Think for yourself. Question authority.